Dear audience, we are here today to have a special dialogue about maybe the most important area in our life, marriage. I'm here today with uh, a person who has dealt with this uh, family issues and uh, marriage department all over the world, being the, the director of uh, General Conference um, Family Department. So I'll be asking him a lot of questions about mm -hmm. how to deal with this blessed but also difficult to deal with couples, marriages, family, children. Elder Willie Oliver, welcome in Romania. Mulțumesc. <laughs> welcome to our show. Project M tries to, to focus on um, specific things, and in this dialogues we'll be having, we'll try to, to get to the core of the things in, in marriage. From my point of view, that's the most important and, and most pleasant blessing of the Lord. But again, I have to admit that it's struggling, and I don't see much happiness around, so I, I try to fight with it and to be a help for others. Mm -hmm. what's, your, what's your personal testimony about marriage? Well, marriage is a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful gift of God and uh, established by God in Eden at creation. Before the, sin. Before sin, it was God's intention. So marriage is not just happenstance. It has God's vision stamped on it. What we do know is that from the very beginning, after God had created the animals and, and, and uh, vegetation and trees and birds and animals, uh, Adam, the first man, was given the opportunity to name the animals, and as he was doing so, he recognized there was none that looked like him. He, he was unique for his species, and uh, God must have uh, apprehended that he was noticing that he had no comparable person, entity, uh, for himself. So God said, it's not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper, suitable. Not a giraffe, you know, not a cow, not a horse. Not a man. Not a man, but a being suitable for him. Eve, complementary. And God said, um, you, a man shall leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. Of course, the first man had no father or mother. God was all of that. But as an example, as um, outlining, if you will, God's plan for humankind in the days ahead, leave your father and your mother and be united to your wife. This is a man, and he says, be united to your wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So marriage was intentionally God's plan for humankind to give companionship, to give support, uh, to love and reciprocate love. In fact, um, in Genesis chapter 1, when it says that God said, let us make man in his own image, and the image of God created he, him, in the image of God created he, them, um, What's wonderful about that is that as human beings, male and female, we're created in the image of God. And I think that marriage is the quintessential relationship, human relationship, where we get to reflect the image of God, male and female. That, in combination, is the image of God. Here's something else that I like to say about that, Please. and that is ever since creation week, everything God has made for our blessing and joy Satan, the enemy, the evil one, has tried to destroy everything God gives us for a blessing. So marriage could be a great blessing, but it could also be a great curse if we don't um, engage in marriage in the way that God has outlined in his word, the Bible. Thank you so much. Well, you started all from the beginning. The Lord intended that. Absolutely. And as I remember, Adam 
had been single for a few hours yes. and he couldn't uh, he couldn't wait much because that was the plan of, of the Lord a lot of questions cross my mind when <laughs> when you talk about this uh, so I, I try to be specific before you, you go on with a lot of good things to tell us try to to focus on on a specific um, age I mean the teenagers because we'll be talking about grown-ups uh, seniors but first of all teenager 12 13 17 years old they, they have a need to relate to belong yes, to be loved um, what can you tell them about this this need to make a couple, but also to consider their age and, you know, the Satan's uh, counterpart. Well, um, teenagers are an important part of the human family. Um, certainly they had to be infants before they became teenagers. But the teenage years, um, usually we say 13 through 19, it's uh, teens, uh, it's an interesting, important, and yet very um, crucial, if you will, time in the life of a human being. It is a time when you're developing, and at the same time, you're not fully developed. It's a time when you are becoming aware of yourself, aware of your capacity as a human being, and yet you're not fully there yet. Here's what I do know. That many times the interaction between parents and teenagers tends to be volatile. And there's a reason for that. Uh, teenagers now have a voice, but their prefrontal cortex of their brains, where the center of judgment is found, is not fully developed. So they use language towards their parents that uh, doesn't make sense sometimes. You say, whoa, they're talking to their parents that way. Well, that's because they have agency. They're able to know that they're human beings, that they can use their voice, they can even yell, but complete judgment is not there yet. One of the reasons in the work that I do, along with my wife on marriage and family, we uh, always encourage young people, teenagers, to not be too in a hurry to get married. In fact, what we do know, based on scientific research, that the center of judgment is found in the prefrontal cortex of the brain, right around here, and it's not fully developed until, until age 25, thereabouts. So, you do better to wait. That may not be a popular message in Romania. Maybe, I know, there are some groups that marry much younger, and perhaps you marry younger than uh, most of the Western countries, perhaps. But what we do know is that you do better. Uh, people who marry after age 25 tend to have lower levels of marriage uh, discomfort, lower levels of divorce, and um, because they go into it a little bit more, uh, what would I say, sensible than just emotional. Your body is ready, your mind is ready, you're usually at a point in life where if you've gone to university, you're now finished your university. If you haven't gone to university, perhaps now you've entered your trade, you're able to uh, provide for yourself and someone else. Hence, the teenage years are a time of preparation. And parents need to be smart about this. Uh, love your teenagers. Don't wait until they become teenagers to love them. Love them from they are born. Have great conversations with them. Have a great relationship with them so that when they arrive at the teenage years, we call them the rebellious years, where they're differentiating. They're, they're trying to be their own people. Um, that is a very crucial time. Yeah. Should parents talk about um, sexuality with their children? And if so, at what age or, yeah. or what age should a teenager engage into a relationship, not into marriage, right. but if they, if they play along uh, from um, to early age, it might be harmful. They don't want to get married, but they, they get into this uh, relationship area 
and what age should be fit for getting in a uh, couple relationship? In right. what age should the parents uh, take into account for uh, talking to them about sexuality? Yeah. Well, speaking about sexuality, parents should be talking to their children about sexuality from their born, um, at their level. Uh, there are always opportunities to do so. Um, and, and talking about sexuality is not even, even mentioning the word sex. Uh, talking about sexuality may just be, uh, they have to do something with uh, the way you treat each other as husbands and wives. The way you hug, the way you are affectionate with each other, that's all a part of conveying a healthy sexual message to your children. We're all sexual beings. And as human beings, we're sexual from the moment we are born. But we're not ready. We're not ready to engage, if you will, the way God created humans and created sexuality for marriage. That's the context of sexuality, of sexual activity, marriage, not before marriage. And um, teenagers engage in intimate relationships uh, too early to their own demise and peril. So, what does too early mean? Uh, too early is any time where you are not ready to be married. Wow. Really. Any time you're not ready to be married is too early to be paired off. I know kids are pairing off in middle school, they're pairing off in high school. That's not a good thing. That, that's a waste of time. So what we do know, if the closer the parents are to their children, uh, there's affection between parents and children, there's a good relationship in the home. Uh, children don't feel the need as much to engage with someone else, to have someone close, if they're close with their parents. That's why parents are so crucial to what needs to happen with children. Love your children, be kind, be gentle, create a warm place in your home. Make your home a warm place. Make it a welcoming place so that kids know they can come to you. Uh, if you start pairing off, you start pairing off when you are ready to enter into the lane that will lead to marriage. Good to know. Yes. So the more the parents fill their hearts with love, kindness, sense of belongingness, and they feel safe and they, they feel yep. complete, yep. The, the less they need to engage in harmful, uh, yes. too early relationships. Yes. yes. In fact, a parent's love, a parent's affection, we call them protective factors. That's what the research calls them, protective factors. There's more research that suggests that families who have dinner together at least four times a week, that serves as a protective factor. Parents feel close to their children, the children feel close to their parents. These days, families are not having dinner together. Perhaps in U Romania you are, but in most of the Western world, we don't have dinner with our families. Everyone has a different schedule. Everyone is off doing their own thing. Uh, people come home, they grab something, they watch television. There's no time around the dinner table. That dinner table is very important. So if I would say anything to Romanian families, if you're not having dinner together, and perhaps you are as Romanians having dinner together, I don't know. Uh, it serves as a protective factor. And dinner time is a time without smartphones. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah, dinner time is a time without smartphones. It's not a time where everyone is around the table looking at their own screen. I like to say to parents, my wife and I, and my wife is a therapist and she works with me with families around the world. We usually encourage families to have a device basket, okay? Just a little basket, it could be anything, and not at the dinner table, but perhaps somewhere in the kitchen. And as people are coming to sit at the dinner table, leave your device there so that dinner time becomes, becomes a sanctified time. You connect. A holy place for the family, a time to connect a time to ask questions, to engage each other about the day. What happened? How was your day? How was school? You know, how, how was that class? How was that homework? How was that exam? Yeah, uh, it's a way to build intimacy among parents and children so that children know 
that they're cared for. That serves as a protective wow. factor. So, from Eden, um, parents have a tremendous role. Yes. Kids need to wait until yes. they, they are mature enough. Mature enough. In university, perhaps. Time together, uh, connection, yes. and fun, if yes. I may add, and fun. They Absolutely. Need, they need fun. All right. Thank you for your words and um, make your, your message be a blessing to our audience. God bless your ministry. Thank you. It's good to be with you.